Well, I'm finally here catching up with the big man, Mr. Peter Hickman at uh, Gas Monkey Garage by FHO Racing. We've got the fantastic selection of bikes behind us here and Peter's finally back racing on Manx Roads. How does it feel to be back, Peter? It's been a long time coming, hasn't it? No, it's, uh, it's great and it, the weather's been fantastic. Lots of riders, lots of people here. Yeah, brilliant to be back. Just seen you entertaining the crowds as well. <laughs> what was that all about? Yeah, uh, we had uh, a few sponsors here, so um, they had some guests. So I did a little garage tour, really, just explain a little bit about the bikes, how they work, how the team works as well, what we've got going on in the background, the things you can't see, a lot of the things that people don't realise even. So I kind of spoke about a little bit of everything, probably, I don't know, how long was I there for? 20 minutes? <laughs> Something like that. Longer than what I thought I was going to talk for. But anyway, um, yeah, just trying to give a bit of information and, yeah, un so people understand what's going on. We just had a family talking to us there saying how um, great you speak and how open <laughs> you are with the fans as well. And it's really appreciated. And, and it's an open paddock anyway, but for you, it, it really is a special thing for the fans. Yeah, I like talking. <laughs> <laughs> I guess is is the best thing, isn't it? No, I, yeah, it's what it's all about, you know. Without the fans, we don't have we don't have racing, in my opinion. I said it um, I said it in a different interview the other day that without the fans, there, there's no sponsors because what would be the point in sponsoring? You know, the, the, the sponsors are here because they're trying to reach the people they need to reach. So without the fans, there's no sponsors. Without sponsors, there's no race teams. We don't have a race, so. Um, yeah, you know the fans are massively important. That's why I've always been as open as I can be. Uh, and bike fans, I think, are different to everyone else. Anyway, they're uh, they're they're an open crowd. They understand. They're uh, on the whole very respectful. Like if I say, oh, I'm really sorry. I've got something to do. You know, people are, people are fine with it. So, uh, but I give as much time as I can do. Um, when I've had enough, I go and lay down in the motorhome and <laughs> lock the door. But I'm quite worried uh, to Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but to be honest, that doesn't happen very often. I'm uh, yeah, pretty chilled out. So you've got, over the years, a ridiculous amount, a huge list. If you look at your bio on Instagram, if you just even have a little look at that, you've got a, such a list of accolades over the years. But this must taste extra sweet being the fastest man around the TT course. It's a nice accolade to have, yeah. And it's something I get asked about a lot. And even this year, are you going to break it? Are you going to do 136? And my answer is always the same it's only it happens if it needs to happen a lap record is awesome to have don't get me wrong it's it, it's a really really cool thing to have but it will always get broken eventually it never lasts a race win lasts you know no one can take a race win away from you so winning is the is the most important thing for us or for me as a rider because it can't get taken away a lap record is a really nice sweetener doesn't really mean anything <laughs> just nice to have yeah of course it is so coming back to the gas monkey sponsorship i saw uh you guys on the youtube channel you had a head over there must have been a little bit of fun getting over there and uh being uh, experiencing their hospitality <laughs> if you will. texan hospitality is <laughs> some of the best hospitality in the world let me tell you i i've been going to texas now for a good few years um i've actually known richard for about seven years now uh, excited for him to come tomorrow. He comes on Friday. A lot of people have been asking, but he is actually coming for, for at least a week. Mm -hmm. um, so he's going to be here for all the races, which is really cool. He's never seen anything like this before. Right. He's been on the island, but only briefly. We never did a full lap or anything when we did the launch of the bike, which obviously looks, well, I know I'm biased, but the bike looks absolutely yeah, epic. Cool. Um, so, yeah, it's going, to be, it's going to be interesting to see what he actually thinks about it all. But yeah, I've been to Texas. I go, I go at least once a year. I normally go to the Colin Edwards boot camp and go and do a, a week's worth of riding bikes, shooting guns, really. That's uh, it's always a good thing. And I'm always trying to nip up to Dallas and say hello to Richard and the guys and uh, have a bit of fun with the Gas Monkey crew. Awesome. So coming back to these bikes then, how are they feeling around the course? You obviously got fastest last night. You got a few people on your tail there, though. <laughs> uh, how, is, how are they feeling? Yeah, not too bad, to be fair. Uh, the stock has been pretty pretty easy. As stockers are, they're kind of just out of the box. They work. Put fuel in them, put tyres on them, and off you go. Um, the super bike's been a little bit of a pain in the ass, to be quite <laughs> honest. But um, we're trying to, trying to figure out exactly what it wants. It was actually a brand new bike. It's very unusual to come to the TT on a brand new bike. I had not sat on that bike until Sunday so for the first practice um, we wouldn't normally have done that 
but there was reasons behind it that I'm not going to get into. But anyway, I ended up riding a brand new bike on Sunday, and it had an electrical problem straight away, which is just one of them things. Not not a team problem. It was just something something in the background that shouldn't have been there that was. So unfortunately, I didn't really get to ride it properly on Sunday, and then uh, it rode well on the Monday, and then Tuesday had another issue, and then last night it was not too bad again. Although we got the suspension a little bit wrong on the first lap. I planned to do two flying laps, and I didn't. I only did the one in made a quite a big change and then went back out and it was a lot better it wasn't perfect but it was a lot better um and we still ended up fastest so i was actually quite surprised to end up fastest um interesting the other boys didn't go as that much faster than what they did the night before they all kind of stayed the same um which i was a little bit surprised about but um yeah who knows you don't always show your cards early doors especially <laughs> yeah. not in practice uh, i'm what definitely one for that anyway i've never really been fast in practice so for me to be at the front is is actually quite unusual but um yeah, we'll see what happens. Practice week it is about just, it's learning with the bike. It's getting back on the roads as well. You've just had three years off, yeah. haven't you? So it's getting a feel for those bumps. How are those bumps treating you on Manx roads? Yeah, not not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a very quick reminder of how bumpy Manx roads are. Mm. Um, Loads of people have been saying to me it's getting bumpier, but to be honest, I didn't I didn't really think that. There's maybe a tiny bit of Sulby, it's a little bit bumpier, but everything else I think is pretty much the same as it's always been. But um no, I said the bike's working pretty good. Suspension's working good, so it, you just got to get used to it. You know, it's it doesn't make it any slower. A lot of the people say, "Oh, new tarmac, it's going to be smoother, so it'll be faster." I'm like, no, if it's smoother, it just makes it more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make it any faster. Bumps don't make you slower. They just mean to make it uncomfortable. You got to mm -hmm. hang on more, really. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, the the course is actually in really good nick. You know, it's the organisers have done a great job. Um, they've updated everything they're really progressing with the times they've got light boards now like MotoGP or FIM spec light boards for yellow flags and red flags and all sorts it's mm. they've done a you know they've not they've used their time wisely in this kind of hiatus that we've had mm -hmm. and uh, it's, yeah it's, it's making the event better and it's going forwards which is exactly what we need mega listen have a great one have a safe one look forward to seeing what you do over the next two weeks Peter thanks for your time thank you very much cheers keep an eye on the rest of the content over the next couple of weeks Thank you.